my fellow Americans. This day has brought terrible news and great sadness to our country. At 9 o'clock this morning, Mission Control in Houston lost contact with our space shuttle Columbia. A short time later, debris was seen falling from the skies above Texas. The Columbia is lost. There are no survivors. After years of successful missions for NASA, since its inaugural flight on 25th March 1981, the STS-107 Columbia Space Shuttle was minutes away from its 28th triumphant mission. Unfortunately, it all went up in smoke as soon as the shuttle entered the Earth's atmosphere. Hello and welcome back to Insanity Collection. Today's video is about another of NASA's dreadful incidents, the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. But before we begin, we'd like to sincerely thank each one of you for the upcoming milestone of 10,000 subscribers. It has been an amazing two years, and we can't wait to bring you so much more. Finally, please hit the subscribe button so you do not miss any of our dark and mysterious content. The Space Shuttle Columbia disaster happened on February 1, 2003. NASA investigated the cause of the Columbia disaster, suspending space shuttle flights for more than two years. After catastrophic failure during the launch of Challenger in 1986, the Columbia mission was the second space shuttle disaster that eventually led to the retirement of the space shuttle fleet in 2011. NASA's orbiter Columbia broke up in pieces and burned on its way down as it returned to Earth killing the seven astronauts on board. The seven-member crew of the craft was a diverse one. It included the commander, Rick Husband, payload commander, Michael Anderson, mission specialist, David Brown, Elpana Chawla, Laurel Clark, pilot William McCool, and payload specialist from the Israeli space agency, Elon Ramon. During the crew's 16 days in space, they spent 24 hours a day doing science experiments in two shifts. They performed around 80 experiments in material sciences, life sciences, fluid physics, and other matters before returning to Earth's surface. Columbia was scheduled to land on February 1, 2003. At 1.10 p.m. UTC, the capsule communicator, also referred to as CAPCOM, Charles Hobaugh informed the crew about the approval of deorbit burn. The team successfully completed the deorbit burn, and minutes after, Columbia re entered the atmosphere at an altitude of 400,000 feet, 120 kilometers. At that point, a sensor began recording greater than average amounts of strain on the left wing. The sensor's data was registered to an internal recorder and not transmitted to the crew or ground controllers. As a result of the increased drag on the left wing, the orbiter began to yaw left, but because of corrections from the orbiter's flight control system, this was not noticed by the crew or mission control. The orbiter broke into several small pieces soon after it entered California airspace. The falling debris was observed from the ground as it burned under high pressure forces. Soon, abnormal readings showed up at mission control. Temperature readings from sensors on the left wing were lost, and tire pressure readings from the left side of the shuttle also vanished. The crew first received an indication of a problem when Mission Control noticed different sensors reporting the gear being down and locked, and still in the stowed position. They immediately tried to contact the crew. The commander, Rick Husband, attempted to reach back, but his radio call of, Roger, uh, was cut off mid-transmission. The signal from Columbia was lost and Mission Control stopped receiving information from the orbiter. At 2 p.m., ground observers noticed a sudden increase in debris being shed as the orbiter had begun a catastrophic breakup. Its fore and aft sections had separated from one another. The crew compartment depressurized the moment it collided with the interior wall of the fuselage. At that point, Columbia was near Dallas, traveling 18 times the speed of sound and still 200,700 feet, 
61,170 meters above the ground. Personnel in mission control tried to re-establish contact with the orbiter as they were unaware of the in-flight breakup. They only came to know about the horrific incident when at almost 2.12 p.m., a mission control member received a phone call that mentioned the news coverage of the orbiter breaking up. This information was immediately passed on to the entry flight director, Leroy Kane, who initiated contingency procedures. Shortly afterward, NASA sent search and rescue teams to the suspected debris sites in Texas and Louisiana. Later that day, NASA declared the astronauts dead. This is indeed a tragic day for the NASA family, for the families of the astronauts who flew on STS-107, and likewise tragic for the nation. The debris of the shuttle was scattered over a zone of some 2,000 square miles, 5,180 square kilometers. It took several weeks to identify and collect the parts of Columbia. In the weeks after the disaster, the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, or CAIB, was formed. This was led by Harold Gammon, Jr., former Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Joint Forces Command. A number of officials began sifting through the Columbia disaster, and on August 26, 2003, the Board released a multi-volume report on how the shuttle was destroyed and what led to the horrible catastrophe. The main culprit was a piece of foam from a bipod ramp, a structure that attached the external tank to the shuttle. During its launch, the foam fell off and struck the left wing of the Columbia about 82 seconds after it left the ground. The officials had found it during the second day of the launch during a routine analysis of the launch. The video appeared to show the foam striking Columbia's left wing, but the quality was not good enough to draw any conclusions or to know the extent of the damage it had done. The report was moved forward and the Department of Defense was requested to provide satellite images of the incident, but it was later denied as the department claimed the footage would not be of any help. The investigation found out that there was a hole on the left wing, which allowed atmospheric gases to bleed into the shuttle as it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere, leading to the loss of the sensors and eventually Columbia itself and the lives of the astronauts inside. In 2008, NASA released a detailed survival report of the Columbia crew's last few minutes. According to the report, the astronauts probably survived the initial breakup of Columbia, but after the cabin was depressurized, lost consciousness in seconds. The crew died as the shuttle disintegrated into space. Besides the foam, CAIB put light on the culture at NASA that had led to the foam problem. It ruthlessly recommended NASA seek and eliminate issues to ensure astronaut safety in future missions. The report also added that the shuttle must be replaced with a new transportation system. The necessary changes were made to the structure and model of the space shuttles. NASA even installed new safety measures, including cameras to cover more angles of the launch phases, and used drones to examine the body of the spacecrafts. With renewed designs, the Space Shuttle made several other successful flights, completed the space station construction, and carried the Hubble telescope in space. Every year, at NASA's Day of Remembrance, Columbia's losses, as well as the loss of several other space-bound crews, receive a public tribute. In 2015, the Kennedy Space Center opened the first NASA exhibit to display debris from both the Challenger and Columbia missions. The permanent exhibit, called Forever Remembered, shows parts of Challenger's fuselage and window frames from the Columbia shuttle, personal artifacts from each of the 14 astronauts, seven from each shuttle disaster, are also on display. The exhibit was created in collaboration with the families of the lost astronauts. The crew of the Columbia Space Shuttle has received several tributes over the years. The rover Spirit's landing site on Mars, Columbia Memorial Station. Also, seven asteroids orbiting the sun between Mars and Jupiter are named after each crew member. The same creator who names the stars also knows the names of the seven souls 
we mourn today. The crew of the shuttle Columbia did not return safely to earth, yet we can pray that all are safely home. May God bless the grieving families and may God, may God continue to bless America. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, press that little red subscribe button furiously and remember to tap that bell icon before it tops you. We'll see you next time with another insane video.